Fortnite, Valorant, Paragon, and a lot of AAA quality games use this system. It can supercharge your workflow and provide you with clean and scalable code, or it can completely overcomplicate your game and slow you down. This is the Gameplay Ability System, and in this video I will break down what it is, when you should use it, and when to avoid it. The Gameplay Ability System is a built-in framework in Unreal Engine that gives you a structure on how to build abilities, such as casting a spell or firing a weapon. And it's structured in a way to help you implement things like cooldowns, costs of abilities, adding buffs and debuffs, and also maintaining your character's stats like health, mana, and stamina. And it does all this by providing you with a ready-made system for building all of these things. You still have to build the abilities and the attributes yourself, of course, but the system is there to enforce how to build them. So let's take a look at what this structure looks like. Real quick though, before we dive in, I wanted to mention my Patreon, and that by supporting me there, you get awesome exclusive benefits, such as downloading all of the project files from every tutorial I've ever made. That means a full smart enemy AI template, a bow and arrow system, a interaction system, a damage system, and much, much more to help you get started building your game. You also get access to exclusive tutorials that are not on YouTube and early access to all of the videos I release. You get to vote on the future of the channel and upcoming video ideas and events. And finally, on the highest tier, you get all of that, plus a monthly one-to-one -one call with me where you can ask for help or advice on your game. By becoming a patron, you're not just unlocking these extra benefits, but you're directly supporting the channel and helping me dedicate more time to building these resources for you. So thank you so much for your support. Find the link to my Patreon in the description and see all the benefits you get for a very reasonable amount. Now, back to the video. These are the main building blocks of the gameplay ability system. So let's break them down one by one. Gameplay abilities are the actual functionality of an ability. So if this ability is firing a weapon, then the gameplay ability blueprint or C++ class will contain the functionality for what happens when this weapon is fired. For example, playing a firing gun animation doing a line trace and seeing what it hit. But what happens after the trace hits something? Is the gameplay ability still responsible for applying damage and then subtracting health from the hit actor? Well, no. That is the responsibility of gameplay attributes and gameplay effects. Gameplay attributes are all of the stats that your character can have. Think of things like health, mana, stamina, etc. And the way you modify these attributes, like in our example of the bullet hitting an actor and you need to subtract from that actor's health attribute, that is the responsibility of gameplay effects. Gameplay effects are blueprints that define how an attribute should be modified. For example, you can have a damage gameplay effect that subtracts 50 from the health attribute of a certain character or a heal gameplay effect that adds 50 to the health of a certain character. And of course, this value 50 can be dynamic. Now, the final building block of the gameplay ability system is gameplay cues. Gameplay cues are responsible for spawning all the visual effects related to your abilities. For example, an impact effect or sound when our bullet hits something. These gameplay cues are a simple blueprint that are associated with a specific ability or a specific gameplay effect. Now, let's see how they all fit together in our example of firing a weapon. The gameplay ability is responsible for playing the animation, doing a line trace, and checking which actor was hit. Then it applies the gameplay effect on that hit actor which then subtracts a certain amount from the health attribute of that hit actor. And finally, the gameplay effect spawns any associated gameplay cues, such as flashing the hit actor red, like you see here. Of course, I'm oversimplifying a bit here, and I'm not considering things like cooldowns, tags, costs, and I haven't even begun to discuss networking but this gives you a general idea on how the framework is structured. 
So now that you know the high levels of the gameplay ability system, let's discuss some of its pros and cons. Pros, it has built-in multiplayer support with client-side prediction, rollback, and replication that could save you months of work. But of course, it has to still be configured properly. GAS is highly structured to ensure that you are following best practices and keeping a clean and scalable code base, if used correctly. And finally, it is very modular and data-driven, which allows you to reuse many parts of your abilities and maintain them easily. Again, if built correctly. So what are some of the cons of GAS? Well, first of all, it has a steep learning curve, which requires you to study a lot beforehand to ensure that you're not building anything in the wrong way. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare to debug and it's going to work against you instead of for you. And it requires understanding of C++ or coding in general, because a lot of the core functionality is not exposed to blueprints. And finally, it is overkill for small and single player projects. So when should you use the gameplay ability system? Definitely use it if you're building an RPG or mobile-like game with a lot of complex abilities, or you're building a multiplayer game with a decent amount of abilities. Then GAS will ensure that you are building it in a structured and easy to maintain and scale way that will save you a ton of time on the long run. Or if you simply want to learn how to structure your code like a AAA dev, then learning how to use GAS and how the gameplay ability system works will ensure that you have the knowledge to build any system in any project like a AAA dev. So when shouldn't you use GAS? Well, it should go without saying that if you're building a game without abilities, like a simple platformer, then of course, don't use GAS. Or if you're building a single player game with only a handful of abilities like a light attack, a heavy attack, and one or two spells, then gas will be way too complex for your project and you're better off creating your own system with lightweight logic. And finally, if you have zero experience in coding and no interest in learning, then the C++ parts of the gameplay ability system will definitely be a stopper for you. You can copy and paste them for sure, but understanding how they work is crucial to utilizing the system to its fullest capacity. Personally, as an engineer, I use the gameplay ability system and I love it. And I will continue to use it in any project or any game that I'm building that does have a lot of abilities, as long as I am out of the prototyping phase and ready to scale. Now, with all that said, if you're still unsure about gas, then my upcoming completely free and comprehensive series will take you from knowing nothing about this framework to mastering it. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss lesson one. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Wanna see me solve a Rubik's cube blindfolded? Let's see if this works. Ready and go. Close enough. Well, I can solve it unblindfolded. Sometimes I make mistakes with the blindfolded version. It's pretty difficult actually, but hey, still learning, I guess.
There we go. Okay, 